This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. It's recently been called a home for hipsters, an artistic and cultural center, a hidden Soho, Bohemia by the Bay, Staten Island? Give me a break, or so I thought. Here to talk about Staten Island, its art, its culture, and its history are Carl Rutberg and Anne Marie McDonald. Dr. Carl Rutberg is executive director of the Alice Austin House Museum and has been for the last decade. Prior to joining the museum, Carl was the executive director of the New Jersey Museum of Agriculture. He teaches at CUNY's College of Staten Island and the Fashion Institute of Technology. Anne Marie McDonald is the Director of Education at the Alice House Museum and has been since 2006. Before that, she was Arts Education Coordinator at the Staten Island Museum. She is an award-winning artist herself who has exhibited her uh, sculpture, photos, and other art at dozens of solo and group exhibitions. She's a Brooklyn College CUNY grad, and she and her family live on Staten Island. Welcome back. Thank you. Last Thank you. week we talked about Alice Austin, the person and her art, and very briefly began to talk about, with a little bit of background, the museum. Clear comfort now, the Alice Austin House Museum. Carl, talk about the house and, your, in a sense, your relationship to the house as a museum. Well, I think um, it's, it's a house museum, uh, meaning it's, it's the house where Alice Austin grew up and lived for most of her life. And the question is, how can you best make that into an exciting place that people want to come to and have fun? And what we thought, rather than focusing so much on the Victorian era, why don't we try to focus on, on who Alice Austin was? Mm -hmm. And she was innovative, she was creative, she was a party gal, she liked to, to experiment, she liked to go places where no one had gone before. And so we took that and we poured that into the house. And, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to show very modern photography. We're trying to do dance and music and parties, exciting education shows, because not, not because they're fun, and, 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 but because they connect to Alice Austin and they connect to who she was. And if I may, you really do connect the physical place yes. with the artifacts right. and her photography right. with the modern photography. Right. And as you mentioned, Anne-Marie, you run some really very, very interesting programs at the museum. We need to talk about one in particular, but go ahead, talk about okay. what you do. Well, first of all, the site. I, we have a lot of school groups come, we have, um, but we have groups actually from young children all the way to college classes coming. Women history class comes and uh, adult groups come. But the first thing, of course, is to take them to the front of the house so that they see where we are right on the New York Narrows. It's so fabulous. It is. It is fabulous. And of course, it has tremendous history possibilities just to talk about that. We hit, um, you know, whether it's the Verrazano or Hudson or the Lenape Indians. And, and then they see the um, Alice's home, her photographs. And school groups get to take photographs. We are very much a hands-on. Um, we use our digital cameras and they each either, you know, younger children get an object, the older children get, um, you know, a location. They get to find where Alice took the photograph, and then they each take their own photographs. We work a lot with, with uh, immigrant communities, mm -hmm. students' second language, right. behavioral problems, and who have problems communicating, writing, re talking, but with the camera, mm. they are suddenly at the same level yeah, as the students. Yeah, democratic order. That's right. right. They can capture what they feel and what they see, and they can put the photo on, on, on view just as the rest of the students. It's a wonderful tool that really works on, on, on a lot of levels. And, and we look at composition, we look at Alice's photographs, right. we talk about how they can take the photograph. There's really, they come away with, with something. Yeah, but we have also deal with teens. Go ahead. You know, we have the teen studio program, Sarah Signorelli teaches. 
Um, and I know that you're dying to ask me about our etiquette. Program. Oh yeah, the etiquette I know. classes. I mean, come on, you got to tell me what's. Well, you know, end. first of all, Gertrude Tate. Will you teach Tate. me how to, where to put the the forks and spoons? What is etiquette? Gertrude Tate taught etiquette and social dance, so that was her, you know, entree, and of course the Victorian period. But the, I think Alice would be smiling knowing that we were also, you know, uh, continuing on with this, but. I teach etiquette um, in the schools and at the house. And at the house, you know, the Girl Scout program is very, very popular. In the schools, it's so important to, we teach posture, we teach not just table manners, but social etiquette introductions. How to we introduce people. We should make this people. mandatory in grades one through eight. I love teaching the etiquette. The, the kids love it. I mean, they really enjoy it. I think that some people well, are a little have shy. The, we have the summer camp, right? And we have the summer camp that I teach a manners summer camp. It's, um, it's, it's a week of manners. You, Mrs. Manners? That's this right. is good. You know, I have sort of become that because I noticed that I get a lot of calls from the advance asking me, you know, um, well, what about this and what oh, about so that? Oh, so you're an expert so, on manners. Oh, man. I, should, I don't know that I would go you should that use, far. You should use me as a subject. My wife would, okay. Let me... Contemporary photography, one of the interesting things, and you mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. was the, the intermixture of the contemporary photography with the Alice Austin photography. And what, what struck me was the, the Liberia photos with, right. with Tim Hetherington. Talk right. about that. And also the relationship to the Liberian community yes. and Staten Island. Right. Well, they, um, there are more Liberians on Staten Island than there are anywhere except for Liberia. For some, and you know how it works. Unbelievable. It, it, it's the, the way it's always worked, right? A, a group comes, and then people know, yep. and then they... Yeah, they're precipitous. Same yep. with the Italians, all, yep. the Swedes, all everybody. And whatever, yeah. So, so we have a large Liberian community, and, and as it happens, they're not far from the museum. And we were trying to, well, how can we work with these people? The museum, we want to serve everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to mount this exhibit uh, with photos from the Liberian Civil War with Tim Hedrington. Tim, you might know, is a brilliant photographer who was recently killed in Libya. Libya. And he came to the museum several times, and he was a great supporter, and we miss and him. the photographs are really yeah, remarkable. We, yeah. Yeah. we did the show. We invited the Liberian community. Tim, Tim came to speak, and it, was, it, was, uh, it worked on, on a lot of levels. But the connection to Alice Austin is she traveled, and she took photographs mm -hmm. when she travels, and, and the same what, what Tim Hedrington did. And so... You can connect all these themes with Alice Austin and with the house and with the with the Liberian community, and so so we 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 do it all the time, and and I'm pleased and proud to be able to. Now you've been living on the island for yes. quite a while, and since you moved, what you moved in the mid '80s? Um, well, I've been on Staten Island 20 years. Okay. And I came. I had an apartment in Manhattan for 12 years. Um, so my husband had a house in Staten Island, and he was very nervous about me moving from Manhattan to Staten Island. And you weren't Island. terrified of going into the hinterlands? No. I mean, what I, I, I found in anyway. Staten Island, I got a studio at Snug Harbor Cultural Center. It had a, a very vibrant, small arts community there. And it was, it was wonderful. And, there, and with that came opportunities. You were surprised and, by that. You did, did you know of that beforehand? No, I just, had no idea. Oh, so I this is good. You went in with the regular attitude that most of us have about Staten anything really about Staten Island, um, but It's really I, a forgotten borough in many ways. Yes, and, and, in and, many and ways. But it, you had mentioned once that Staten Island is like it that way. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think some of Staten Island is torn. Some want, let's keep it the way it is, and some people, let's open it up and invite more people. Well, that North Shore is really, it, it's really hopping. Well, really I, th I think what's, I think for, since Anne Marie yes. came, and perhaps even, there's been this constant work of trying to build this critical mass right. of artists. Talk and more about artists that. are coming now. Right. I think that's what's really happening. You're seeing that what I discovered 20 years ago, you're having more younger artists are making the choice. They can buy a house there or they can rent and a studio. Trees. They can have, you know, they're going to have their garden. They can, you know, and there's the community to support them. So they have people who are opening up their studios 
as galleries, opening up their homes as galleries. You'll see really first, on the first North Saturday. Shore. First Saturdays where they can come. Oh, second Saturday. Second Saturday. It's second Saturdays. One of those. They can do, um, you know, a walk at all of the all of the open galleries, whether it's show or at bay. There's a lot of, of galleries right in that area, and uh, they're happenings, and it's a small community. A small really community nice. that's growing. This year, we've done some really large projects. For example, we did something called Lumen, yes. which was a huge video installation made by COSI, which is the Coalition on Arts right. and Humanities. And it was right by the ferry, and it's this sort of old area, which dates back to, what, 1860s, well, brick buildings like the South Street Seaport, okay. very much like well, the, the National South Street. Lighthouse yeah, Museum. National Light. And Museum. what they, they took over this area and did outdoor video installations. Right. Thousands of people. It's so video you, performance. Yeah, video and performances. And that really brought in a lot of Thousands people. of people. Well, I mean, and actually June, June 23rd is the next date. If you, if you doing want. It again. I'm coming. Doing, doing it again. Doing it again. Absolutely. And it's actually going to be at uh, Atlantic Salt this year. Okay. Um, Which is also very close to the ferry. Right. And, but what you're pointing to is a, a, a phenomenon of cities that buildings become derelict because they don't have the old uses and then right. people move in and use new new spaces but you've seen this with artists over and over and over again they come into that's an right. area cheap right. rents that's right. they make it wonderful they attract a lot of people and money and it drives them out and they move so this is like they went from Manhattan Soho to Brooklyn to, to Long Island City and now now they're in yeah I mean Staten, Island? Staten Island has always had the you know it's it's the the lack of the subway and but I think now uh, that that the prices are so expensive other places right. and that the ferry is actually a very enjoyable ride and so so more and more people are taking it and the community is growing and we see that with other institutions the Staten Island Museum right. the Noble Collection the uh, Tibetan Museum all these institutions are supporting new young creativity well you just celebrated the, the what the 125th anniversary of the staten island i mean i didn't even but 350th anniversary um of the, of, of of the first permanent settlement of the island, island but about the but also the, the museum, museum you're right museum. Yes. oh the museum yes. i'm sorry no, yes. that's okay I, I, I didn't even realize there was a staten island museum and then when i went to the website and then look Actually, it's they are, it's going to be very right. exciting because they are um, working on the buildings, building A and B at the Snug Harbor. Talk so about Staten a little Island bit about Snug Harbor. I was there the lit when I visited the Alice Austin. Well, Snug Harbor, Harbor, Snug Harbor is a group of buildings that was um, a retired home for sa seamen, basically, the first building in 1844. They're this beautiful... Uh, revival building. Yes. Yeah, and they're oh. huge, and what, what they've done is slowly but surely each of them has been restored right. and they have specific use, and, and some of them are being open for contemporary. There's a new house gallery of contemporary, contemporary. art. I was, I was, right. they, uh, we visited. So, so the, I and the Chinese uh, gardens. Chinese Scholars, Scholars Garden. Garden and, Children's and Museum Children's is there. It's a definitely noble place maritime visiting. collection. Right. And it's one of the, what's interesting, what I found interesting is that some of the buildings still look pretty derelict. So it's a work yes. in progress. Yeah. It is a work, a work in progress. progress. So, but yes. I think, but I think the foundation, the infrastructure, for for getting an and sort of an arts community really yeah. going. Yeah. And and there's some really dedicated Melanie Cohn, Cosi, Laura Jean Waters, for example, who are really who worked right. year after year. This doesn't just happen. Right. right. You know, it just doesn't. You know, it it happens because people work very hard to. And create. it was the community that really got yeah. that. You know, just like Alice Austin House. That's right. It was the community that. So you're made really that. talking about grassroots activities. Yes. What about Absolutely. what about government officials? What about mm -hmm. You're, you know, local city councilmen, uh, assemblymen uh, to Well, absolutely. They're very supportive. And, and Matt Titone, for example, is the assemblyman who gave the seed money to create this Alice Austin Sinclair. musical. Yeah, right. it was. Yes. Uh, and, and here, if I can just, you know. Yeah, but he was the former executive director of Snug Harbor. For a short it? while, for, for a short, short while, while, sort of interim. But there's also this discussion about pork, you know. What's that old pork and they're just blah, blah. Well, pork got an Alice Austin musical. Oh, very interesting. I mean, you know, member items, you know, the good, the, the Googles right. constantly That's right. complain. And That's right. And, and I think editorial it's got, it's got a terrible name, right? Member item right. pork. But then when you see what it's actually being used to, it used to fund Anne Marine School Program. It's used to fund an Alice Austin play. And suddenly member items don't really look so on, bad. Yeah, they really That's do right. take on if, a significance. If you really begin. That and of if course, you're looking at it from the stratosphere, it's one thing. Yeah. But when you're on the ground, it's That's really right. pretty remarkable. Right. And, and other institutions, are, so we've much supported by um, Debbie Rose, who is our local city council mm -hmm. person, is understands the arts, yes. understand what it can do, 
and is, is very supportive. And then in, in your borough president, your borough hall, I mean, Jim Molinaro, that borough hall is absolutely fabulous. Jim, yes. Jim loves it. I mean, you know, I, yes. I, when I visited, I was astounded at the beauty of the building. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And, and they got beautiful murals the in murals, there. murals, yeah. yeah. W WPA, the, uh, and public yes, art, public, public art, art, public uh, art absolutely. project. Absolutely. Well, we're, I, my office at Baruch is in uh, uh, WPA uh, Family Court building, yeah. so it's really beautiful stuff. Yeah, then you've got the Garibaldi Museum. I that's mean, right. come on. That's right. I that's mean, right. you know, and that's only that's a that's not far from us. That's Walk to us. Yeah, no, I Walk mean, for, you know, and there's the whole Americans on the island. How many of them know that the the Garibaldi Museum? That's he right. lived on Staten Island. Yeah, that's right. Shocking. And there is this whole community called Stapleton, which is close to the ferry, which is this sort of blue collar working class, but where you have large spaces, apartments to rent, mm -hmm. and it's a short bus ride from the ferry. It's an easy commute, and I would urge anyone who's, who's watching to take a look. If you're looking for a low rent, uh, exciting arts community, take a look at St. George, take a look at Stapleton. Well, the Center for Urban Future did a report in 2009 that really recommended both the development from from a development side, but in a sense, was a call to the creative class right. to yes. come to Staten Absolutely. Island. Absolutely. Do a tour. I mean, I when after I visited Staten Island, mm -hmm. I said to my wife, "We should do a Times piece. The three of us should do a Times right. piece. Third in the travel right. section. Right. Thirty six hours in Staten Island. Okay, so we've got thirty six hours in Staten Island. So the first day, so it's 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 three days and two nights. One day we're going to spend at the museum." At the Allen. Two, two days at the Ellis Austin House. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. Okay. No, a ben, day and a night know, and, what, and a breakfast. What well, we Fort Wadsworth is not far from us. What Fort we Wadsworth. haven't mentioned is that Island is really the borough of parks. And we haven't even, yes. you know, that we haven't even scraped. Yes. Go ahead. Talk Absolutely. about we, that. We have the Green Belt, which is this huge slot of land that runs through the island, which is when you're walking through it, you, you think you're in Minnesota. That's right. You have no That's idea. That's necessarily a plus, but go well, ahead. Uh, <laughs> but it could be a nice day. It's, if, you're, if you're tired of the hustle and bustle of the city, you're looking to get away, but you only got a, a metro card, then the Green Belt offers you a respite from, from a lot of stuff that's going and on. You've got lots of lakes. That you can well, Fresh Kill Landsville land. is now going to Fresh be Fresh Kill, Kill Park. I, That's right. I, I, and they I, just I had a sneak peek um, uh, opening Fresh Kill uh, Park up to people, and I was there. It was, like, phenomenal. What is it, the highest point on, on the... On Something. The, I yeah. mean, they had, you know, I think Ed Johnson doing the hawk, you know, looking for the hawks, and bird life is beautiful. And then they had kayaking. Um, is going to be horseback riding over mm -hmm. there. It, it's and it's as big as Central Park. It's oh, I think three times. Big, it's a, it's a, I think it's three times. And it might be even more than three times. I mean, it's huge. It's it's it's, in, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I it's mean, phenomenal. it's going to be really very very exciting. When when that when that when they complete that thing, yeah. it's going to be something. Tours else. of the former dump. Wow, that's right. Run it. That's right. Fresh and Park. you know what? It's it's going to be interesting to see how long it will take before people stop referring it as a dump and, and start as the park. As the park. Yeah, you know Fresh how how long? Because you're an old time New Yorker. Nice. For you, it's going to be a dump. For other yeah, people, yeah, I'm, I'm one, as I'm walking, I'm wondering what's underneath my feet. Well, you I don't want to know. Probably. No, I don't. <laughs> know. But it's you sufficiently know. below my feet yes. that I really yes, don't have to worry. And we got a zoo. That's true. We got the Staten, Staten Island, Island Zoo. Zoo. Is, is wonderful. You have a children's museum. We got That's a children's right. Museum. Okay, okay, so where are we going on this this, this oh thirty six hours? So we're and you have to eat. There. And you have, oh, have great oh, Italian no, oh, okay. food. <laughs> we have a lot of. <laughs> That's well, right. Italian That's food, right. I know. Jim Molinaro, right. you know, That's is right. pointed. But out now with a very, we have a big influx of the ethnic um, communities. We have a Sri Lankan community with a lot of Sri Lankan restaurants. We have Indian restaurants. We have a. A Mexican community that's pretty large, and of course the Liberian community. There's a lot of ethnic um, groups that have come into Staten Island. They it's Italian bring... ethnic or no? no not an Yeah. Area. Oh yeah. No, oh yeah. yeah. Excuse me. It's still got to be the largest population. On oh, Staten Island. Yeah. Staten, Staten Island. Island. Then yeah. we Italians. have South Beach, which which blew me away when I saw it the first. I could not believe it. It's South Beach. I was thinking Miami. What What are you talking? Right. And it turns out it's not that far away from Miami. It's a huge beach right there, and you're looking out of uh, on the quarantine islands. Then, but that's the discussion we had last last week. But it's a beautiful beach with a boardwalk, with a restaurant, yes. and 
It, it's fabulous. Yeah. And again, it, it's only a metro card. It's you take the ferry and a bus and you're there and it's it's fantastic. And you can't forget the other side of the island. The south side of the island has all those um well the Sagain Mansion. The Sagain and the conference house. And the conference house. We haven't house. talked about the conference house. One mm -hmm. this was the conference that they tried to avert the uh the, the Revolutionary War and uh, the conference took place and there's the house today. And again, it's beautifully located right on the water. It's looking over towards New and, Jersey. And actually, Empire Boardwalk, if you follow that, right. lo is the location well, is I mean, it's a lot conference of, I house. Mean, a lot of films were yes. shot on Staten Island. That's right. Godfather, I mean, That's right. Boardwalk Splendor in the Grass. Splendor That's right. in the Grass. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was because it was cheap and, and rural and suburban where you wouldn't have those views. Okay, where else? Okay, wait. You talked about restaurants. I mean, I want to know food. Give me some restaurant reviews. Where, where, where should I eat for dinner? Um, well, we enjoy Denoy restaurant. Denoy is right? good, and, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, we have another. And one what's the us, uh, uh, what's the New Orleans one? Okay, we don't want to give too many plugs, but they, we've Fire. got that kind yeah. of cuisine. The one, I mean, to be honest, the one. Little problem. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Come on, a little honesty. Yeah, a little honesty. Come on, a little caveat. Public transportation is is a problem on Staten it's, Island. It, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible because the way it works, you get you take the ferry, you get to the, you know, to Staten Island, and then you can take a bus to sort of one of these places. But okay. it's difficult to go from one place to the other, and basically the way it works, you have to take the, sort of the bus back to the ferry, and then so it gets. That's the awkward part. Okay, so you're yeah. the development director of the Staten Island Development Corp. What do you do? I would, you know, try to improve uh, public Ow. transportation. Well, you know, that's, I run a museum. Oh, no, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> do you get cabs? You know, there, there is, cabs? Yeah, there are cabs. You can take cabs. There are, you know, car services. Uh, they're, they're talking about a railroad on the, on the North Shore. There is a railroad on Staten Island. You can take that to the conference house. But, I mean, for people who are thinking Staten Island, wow, I'm going to go, all I'm saying is plan, plan the transportation issue. Okay. Anwar, you're an artist. Talk about sort of your life as an artist in Staten Island and, and outside of, of the museum in terms of exhibitions. Your work, a little bit about you. One thing that I think happened for me, in 1994, uh, there was a competition for um, Henry Stern, the Commissioner of Parks. Mm -hmm. was very interested One in of my putting, putting a um, sculpture in each of the boroughs in front of a children's sculpture. Right. And the parameters were basically a theme of nature. And I was one of the artists who participated, and there were five artists that did maquettes, and they were you know, shown at the Art Lab Gallery. and. People came in and voted on it, and my piece was one called The Bird Named Goldilocks, mm -hmm. which is placed in Clove Lakes Park. And that was my first relationship with um, working in bronze. Mm -hmm. Worked with the Mo Modern Art Foundry in Astoria. I did The Rook, uh, which was another children's piece. Are these public art pieces? Uh, they're cited as public art pieces. The Rook was um, in front of the Children's Museum for many years, and then also the Staten yeah, Island Museum. Who commissioned you to do it? Well, that was actually grant-based, and Elizabeth Egbert in, um, the, at the Children's Museum at the time, she was at the Children's Museum, was very helpful in working with me to get the kind of money that I needed to, to do that project. Um, and then COSI, our local arts council, is very active. And they offer grants, uh, grant opportunities for people, artists, to do things. And whether it's working as in teaching or in education, which sometimes we get grants for going into the schools, or for it being as, as an individual artist. So I've gotten um, different grants to do different types of work. Okay. And then actually, with Alice Austin, that's one thing about being an artist. You're always going in a, in, in a different direction as things you know, I worked with a lot of different museums there in Staten Island, and with Alice Austin, I've entered now into photography. Although I use it, I use photography um, both in my installation work, my printmaking, and and now just as a photographer. So it's it's been a wonderful it's journey. Fun. It's fun. It's fun. It is fun. Okay, let's talk in the last minute or so. Let's talk about what might not be fun: money. You guys must spend a lot of time raising money, begging for money, and the environment seems tight. Just talk about money. It, it's, it's very hard. I mean, every, every nonprofit in the world, or certainly in the United States, are, are, are struggling. Um, what, 
What makes fundraising easy for us, I think, is that Alice Austin is, is a wonderful person. It's a wonderful story. Mm. We, we never need to stretch. When we do grants, when we go out and ask for people, we just need to talk about Alice Austin. And so we, there's no need for us to invent stuff mm -hmm. or to stretch stuff. We, we but just, it's still tough. Though. But it's, it's it hard. Tough. I mean, certainly we, we feel it. And, um, well, we just got a grant from Historic House Trust yep. to work on Worldwide Pinhole Day. Yep. which we celebrate okay, at the Alice Austin time. Day, okay. yes, yes. Um, and that's going to be uh, the last Sunday in uh, April. In so April. we invite your viewers to, to join us. To um, We will provide a pinhole camera. Oh, this is and great. you can come out I'm and coming. take a pinhole right. Right. Uh, photograph and also um, going to be going into the schools yep. to do some pinhole photography. So it's, and you know, we'll do some family workshops. So we do get and that. I think, and I think that what, what Anne-Marie is saying is that's how you do it. You, yeah. You're being aggressive. You can't retreat. You can't shut down, fire, and close. You have to be aggressive. You have to come up with new stuff, reach new communities, do new things. And We're going to have a foreclosure show it. coming up in, in, um, in March. In March. Yeah. A little uh, uh, historical relevance here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because the house was once foreclosed, and obviously, Houses are being foreclosed today, and, and we're going to show the connection to here's this fancy historic house. Well, it wasn't fancy all the time. Uh, the bank took it over and kicked the people out. And, so it's, and, it's with contemporary know, photography. With contemporary and photography. another thing is you have to come out to our openings. We have wonderful we have receptions right on the wall. Okay. This summer we had okay. a great costume party where people dressed up in Victorian clothing, and we put out the croquet set. That's and, right. And for a few hours we were back in Oh, wait, downfield. you're having too good a time. We've got to stop. <laughs> Time's up. They're signaling me. My special thanks to Anne Marie McDonald and Carl Rutberg for giving us their up-close and personal look at the artistic and cultural life on Staten Island and at the Alice Austin Museum. For more information about the museum, go to the website, aliceaustin.org. That's A-U-S-T-E-N. See you all next week on City Talk here on CUNY TV. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.